should not allow the devil and the false prophets of hell to confuse us concerning the word of God. Now, the greatest deception, the greatest deception in the life of a believer is for the devil to use the same word of God to deceive you. Okay, let me just even ask you a very simple question. Yeah. Uh, during your encounters with the Lord, yeah. uh, how much did the Lord tell you about uh, satanic pastors? You know, the Lord gave me a revelation, which is a serious warning to mm -hmm. false prophets and pastors. Yeah. Uh, because these are the people pushing this yes. doctrine. They confuse people. Mm -hmm. One of them is Dr. Abel Damina. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he, people like him so much, but uh, he has a lot of, he has bunches of heresies. What has the Lord told you about uh, all these false prophets who preach this once said, always said? Well, the Lord told me when he visited Sorry, me. I mean, okay. the ones, I'm not talking about the ones that are living in error, yeah. human error, or mm -hmm. maybe because of lack of knowledge. I'm talking about the real ones sent by devil himself. Okay. Now, the real ones sent by devil himself. The Lord told me, uh, the Lord actually revealed more of this to me during my third uh, visitation when he was revealing things concerning the Antichrist and his operations and also that of uh, false prophets in this end time. The Lord said that in this time that many false prophets will arise. Many. They are going to arise, and the sole purpose for them arising is for deception, is to deceive the church. And the Lord told me that this is the method in which they are going to deceive the church. That some of them will come as uh, as uh, pastors, some of them will come as Christian workers, and do actually find themselves into uh, the church of Jesus. They will find themselves into the church of Jesus now. The prophets of this end time and the uh, prophets of Satan, they will come into dimension. As I've mentioned, some will come as a prophet, while some will come as Christian workers. Now, the purpose for them coming is to rob havoc, deception in the body of Christ. Now, those of them that will come as a prophet, they will come with doctrines and heresies from hell. And the Lord uprightly told me that in this end time, the Antichrist has three doctrines. One, it doesn't matter, which we have large numbers of prophets who are preaching this, that even when you are living in sin, it does not matter with God, that once you are saved, you are forever saved. Two, come as you are. If you are a sinner, you don't need to be regenerated. You can remain a sinner, but you can still come to church. Come as you are. Yes. Remain as you are. Remain as you are. You can still come to church. You give offering. You give time. God is happy with you. And then number three is unisex. The man can put on a woman's wear, the woman can put on men's wear, and uh, today we have a transgender that is happening, and even is encouraged in so many churches in the Western world, and these churches, they are overseen by these false prophets. Okay, let, 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 let me just say this. Yeah. The truth is that these people, they come with a lot of power yes, they into, come the church, into the church, and they perform miracles, yes. and people are deceived. You see? Let, let me ask you one question. Yes. Uh, some people believe that if a man of God comes and is preaching holiness, yes. then it is, uh, if he's preaching holiness and righteousness, yeah. uh, it is a clear and a, a complete uh, evidence that he is from God. Yeah. We have seen some people like that. Yeah, they come and they preach holiness, yes. but they try to remove one or two truths. Yes. Can a false prophet come with deception and preach holiness are all of them the ones that do holy miracle? I tell you, it doesn't matter. No. Do we have some who preach holiness? Yes. Because yeah. I know I'm asking this question. A lot of people yeah. are asking me this question. Yeah. Oh, I'm seeing that this man is not of God, but he's preaching holiness. Okay, okay. Let, let me hear from you. Yes. Now, some of them, some of these ministers, they might, they might actually come as preachers of holiness, but inwardly, they are false prophets. They know they are signing. That's why I said some of them will come into the church. Some of them will come as workers. They will look outwardly, they are holy, they preach holiness, but inside they are devils. They know their assignment, and their assignment is to rot havoc and deception in the body of Christ. Hence, Jesus said that beware of false prophet who comes to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly, they are ravenous wolves. So, inwardly, their purpose is to cause destruction when they appear as what as sheep. So, and, and the Lord told me, the Lord actually told me that in this end time, that some 
uh, false prophets, which the devil is going to send, that they, some of them will come as holiness preachers. They will come as holiness preachers, and when they preach, it will be very difficult for the very elect to identify them and to know that they are false prophets. Matthew 24, 24. Yes. It will be very difficult for them, for the true believers, the elect, to identify these people that they are false prophets. Hence, the Lord said that every believer must desire the Holy Spirit because when we have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will tell you when you, when, when you are ministering, the Holy Spirit will tell you this man is not of God, he is a false prophet. Okay, let's uh, talk about this. When you are saved, yeah. when you are saved, uh, you're supposed to live the life of Christ. Yes. You put on Christ. Right. Can one be saved and have holiness inside, mm -hmm. but the holiness is never seen outside? Is it possible? <laughs> yes, it's, it's possible. It's possible when you accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, uh, you are saved. Now, when you are saved, this, your salvation now is more of spiritual than physical. Now, that's why the scripture tells us in the book of Second Corinthians. Let me ask, okay. let me, maybe you don't understand me. I'm okay. saying that uh, we have inward holiness and okay. outward holiness. Yeah. Can you be saved inside? And people will never see it outside okay. that you are saved. They don't see the work of salvation in you. Okay. But you have the salvation okay. inside. And when they ask you, you explain. But you, you are not seeing my heart. Okay. Is it possible? Ah. <laughs> It's not possible. Now. It's practically impossible because when you say you are saved inside, the uh, the Bible says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So it is what is what is inside must surely reflect out. As Jesus Christ said, that let your light so shine before men that men will see your good works and give glory to your Father which is in heaven. So you cannot be saved inside, but outwardly there's nothing to write home that you are saved. Okay, thank you. Yes. Because. Uh, Sometimes you could be very, very disturbed. Yeah. Uh, we know that uh, uh, the human body is uh, the human body. Okay, thank you. Yeah. He said they will know you, you by your fruits. fruits. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's, uh, that's uh, Lisa B. Thank yes. you so much. Yes, you will know them yeah, by, by their fruits. fruits. Um, so um, you see, some churches have become so sexy. Yeah. You see the men putting on handless uh, uh, tin top singlets with body, their six pack yeah. printed on what they are wearing. You see them with low waist, with earring, perm their mouths, perm their hair, and uh, weave their hair, even some yeah. twist their hair like a ratty, and the females with their hips and backside very sexy clothes and their laps yeah. and cleavages open does the church of god supposed to look like this no the church of god is not supposed to uh, to look like like uh, that because that is actually the dressing of the children of this world that's the dressing of the children of this world hence when jesus christ visited me the lord said that to him, it's not difficult for him to identify his own children from the world. He said because the way the world they are dressing, that's how his children is dressing. So between the world and the children, he said he finds it difficult to identify them. Because the church today, they have married themselves to the world while the world has married themselves to the church. Now how is he, how come about this? A believer dressing like the children of the world. Now, when you see a non-believer and you want to preach salvation to that believer, that unbeliever, the unbeliever will tell you that I'm a Christian. I, I, I go to church. I attend. They will just call the name of the denomination for me. I attend this church. And with some of them, that's true. They are in the church, but they are not believers. They are unbelievers in uh, believers. Uh, Floating. So it becomes difficult to identify a true believer from an unbeliever. Hence, as believers, we are not supposed to dress and live like the world. Hence, Jesus Christ said, though ye are in the world, ye are not of this world. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, we will be talking with um, my brother, brother Samuel Ogenetega Emmanuel. Mm -hmm. uh, he has had several encounters. Um, I seen the Lord as... Uh, had supernatural visitations to 
heaven and to hell. He, I've even seen videos of uh, him being um, one of your videos yeah. while you were preaching and uh, Jesus appeared to him and opened hell and mm -hmm. he started feeling the heat mm -hmm. of hell. Um, I decided to bring him live so that uh, we can uh, hear from him and uh, know he, he has a lot of experience though as a child. Uh, when he was still a child, he, he started having these experiences. And even to today, he's now a pastor. Mm -hmm. And uh, though he's still a student, uh, he's, he's a pastor. He's been ordained as a pastor. So uh, for those of you who believe that uh, uh, once saved, you are always saved, uh, he has had messages from the Lord uh, through his supernatural experiences. And he is a witness that there are many Christians who are in the fire of hell. Mm -hmm. Please, um, uh, we, we, we need to continue to sound this over and over again. Mm -hmm. Somebody said we should upload uh, these messages. Just Google Brother Samuel Ogenetega, Emmanuel, Heaven and Hell Testimony. There are so many, even on this channel, you will see the testimonies on this channel. Yeah. He also has a channel on uh, YouTube. Um, you can search and you will find it too. Mm -hmm. And um, follow his, uh, subscribe to his YouTube channel. Though it is new, mm -hmm. you subscribe, you're going to be seeing all these videos uh, popping up on his channel. Mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, you can also ask your question in case you have any question you want to ask him. You can also ask your question. Uh, we want to appreciate you for coming to join us. May the Lord bless you. Mm -hmm. For those of you who have not received the Lord or you are weak um, in your Christian faith, we, are going, we want to pray with you that the Lord God Almighty will strengthen you and also cause you to be closer to Him. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you need deliverance, uh, you want to be free from the powers of darkness, you want to follow the Lord, but you are finding it difficult to come out of the kingdom of darkness, we are going to help you to come out. We'll pray with you and counsel you, tell you what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Now, we are here for solely for the salvation of this, the souls of men and not to uh, make noise or raise money to better our lives. Mm -hmm. No, but for you to be saved because uh, it is salvation, yeah. salvation, nothing equals salvation. So if you want to give your life to Christ, we will we'll pray for you. And if you uh, finish watching this video, please do us a favor by sharing the video. So do you please just pray for those who want to receive the Lord or those who want to strengthen their relationship with God. Okay. For those of us who want to uh receive the Lord as our Lord and best and our Savior. Please kindly say these prayers after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess that I'm a sinner. Have mercy upon me. Lord, wash me with the blood of your son, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ, I believe you died for me on the cross of Calvary. Lord, I renounce every works of darkness. And Father, I accept your son Jesus, who died for me on the cross of Calvary more than 2,000 years ago for the remission of my sin and for the salvation of my soul. Lord Jesus, I accept you. Come into my life, come into my spirit, come into my body and dwell in me. Make me your temple. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Now for those of us who want to strengthen our relationship with God, you are, or maybe you are having one uh, challenge or the other that is drawing you back. I want us to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord, I commit your children into your hands. As many of them, O oh God of heaven, who are drawing back in their relationship and in their work with you. Holy Spirit, divine, the giver of strength, I ask in the name of Jesus that you strengthen the children of God with strength. Strengthen the, 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 the believers with strength in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Holy Ghost, you will dwell in them and you will strengthen them spiritually, physically, in all areas of their life. 
in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, oh God, as the scripture says, that when the Son of Man is lifted high, he will draw all men to himself. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift you high. I lift you high in the lives of your children. And Father, I ask that you will draw them to yourself. You will draw them to yourself as the scripture also tells us that we should draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to us. Lord, draw us to yourself, O God, in the name of Jesus. Every attack, every oppression of darkness against our relationship and against our walk with the Lord. In the name of Jesus, the name that is higher above every other name, I decree now that all their works, they are hereby destroyed. In the name of Jesus, let the influence of darkness, the influence of the pit of hell, expire from our lives now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, precious Father, for we know you have answered us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being with us, for joining us. Uh, please share this video. Uh, visit our website for more information, eagleeyeopener.com and biblicalsexualpurity.com. Our charity organization is Hosanna David Foundation, hdfng.org. Thank you and God bless you. See you another time. Bye-bye.